Jack Doherty is a YouTuber with over 10 million subscribers on the site, but these days he's better known as one of the most popular streamers on the website Kick, live streaming his everyday antics for his millions of fans online. While his career started off innocent enough, lately he's become a controversial figure in his own right, so today we'll be taking a proper look into the guy and see what exactly we're dealing with here. Shout out to the channel members like always, and if you'd want to support yourself, you can subscribe to my Patreon in the corner or YouTube memberships by clicking the join button. I hope you liked the video, but before we get into his current internet whereabouts, however, we must first answer this question. How exactly did Jack Doherty's internet career start? On September 29th, 2016, Jack uploaded his first video on YouTube when he was 12 years old flipping a marker twice in a row during the craze I was flipping things up right on the internet. After the success of his first upload, he would follow it up with another one flipping over a bunch of water bottles and doing trick shots with them, before hopping onto another YouTube trend at the time, that being those good old fashioned prank call videos from back in the day. These early handful of videos showed that Jack knew what kinds of content to make to get easy views, as he was chasing the most popular trends that were going on during that time period and wasn't slowing down anytime soon. While some kids at that age have an idea on how to make the videos for easy views, none had the natural camera presence like Jack, and this would help him grow his channel quickly from the very beginning. Jack would have his first breakout just a few weeks into his YouTube career with this trick or treating the day after Halloween video, getting over 3 million views as of today. He would ride this newfound wave of success by uploading another video flipping markers in his house and getting around 2 million views off that, and on November 24th, 2016, just two months into his career, he would officially hit the 1,000 subscriber mark. Yes, let's go! 1,000! 1,000! Uh, uh, uh. Yes! Let's go! 1,000! He would continue this hot streak and post a handful of videos that weren't his typical content, yet it would prove to not matter much as those would get millions of views in the process as well, showing that he could branch out and still find success on the channel. He would continue to flip water bottles and other items for content on the channel, and to give credit where credit was due, he was doing some impressive stuff for someone who just barely turned 13 years old, so it wasn't completely brain dead content or anything just yet. All this item flipping would lead to Jack uploading his most successful video on his channel on January 13th, 2017. A compilation flipping a bunch of random household items either in succession or stuff that's hard to pull off like a colored pencil for example, getting almost 30 million views as of today. This video would catapult his channel to giant heights just a few short months into his career, and add that alongside yet more videos getting millions of views in the process, he would end up getting to the 100,000 subscriber mark on February 27th, 2017, not even half a year into his YouTube career. Yes! Thank you guys so much! 100,000 subscribers! Yes! Snapchat. He would follow this up with more of what was making him popular. So when seeing that his second reading mean comments video has more views than the first, it's not exactly shocking when taking that into consideration. However, the video right after this one was probably the most telling of how his personality is and what he was willing to do in order to get that YouTube fame. Now beyond the typical clout chasing content of the time like we've been seeing, Jack would also post videos showing progress on his ability to do flips around the house and in the neighborhood. These weren't cringy videos where the kid had no idea what he was doing. He could pull off some pretty good flips especially for his age, showing his daring and outgoing personality that his usual viewers had become accustomed to seeing. It comes to no one's surprise that Jack would try to incorporate these athletic skills of his into his typical trendy videos one day, and when he did, it would open up his career even further for the kid. On March 13th, 2017, Jack would upload his flips for a kiss at the mall video, in which he goes around asking attractive women to give him a kiss if he pulls off a flip right in front of him. Crab Jack, he did. <laughs> <laughs> this video was not only impressive because of the athleticism and skill it takes to pull it off, but the fact he had the courage to go to random women in the middle of a crowded mall to pull it off in front of him, knowing he could easily embarrass and even hurt himself on the hard towel was something you don't see from most people, let alone a 13 year old. <laughs> I'm 13. 13. Yeah, the balls to go off too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gotta give him. It's like kudos. It's like he's got the chops. It was interesting to watch back then, and is still interesting even today, as this video is a great showcase of his confident personality in a positive way for the rest of the internet to see. Soon after the release of that video, Jack would immediately hop onto the fidget spinner trend that was going on during spring 2017, and while not getting the most insane views on the channel, he was still doing pretty good at the end of the day. While the channel was still in a good spot, he would continue to double down on this trend chasing content because that's what was getting him the money and views at the end of the day. However, it seemed that Jack wanted to step things up a notch either out of boredom or to somehow one up his last couple videos. And in turn, we would get the first glimpse of him using that confident personality of his in a more negative light. 
On June 2nd, 2017, Jacker uploaded a video titled trying to get kicked out of Walmart, in which he and his friends mess around out of Walmart, such as climbing into the weird ball pit thing they have, sneaking into the back warehouse section where the employees get shipments and more product from, and making a mess out of the toilet paper by climbing into it and pushing it around the place. This will lead to them eventually straight up spilling paint all over the floor and employees having to clean it up, with Jack even trying to get on the intercom to cause more chaos. It didn't seem like they got kicked out at any point in time in the video, but they would soon leave after having their fun. Jack would take this idea a step further by introducing the lava challenge to these Walmart shenanigans and getting 14 million views in the process, eclipsing his backflip kissing video to become the second most viewed video on his channel as of today. It turns out the store they were at was actually a target, so he already got that clickbait game going on already. And the video itself starts off innocent enough, with him and his friends getting on small objects whenever someone calls out the floor is lava. An employee would start to get upset with him after climbing into the ball pit thing and tell him to get out and stay with his parents, before eventually leading him out the store after he kept messing around despite their warnings. Nothing about these videos were especially interesting back in the day, as it was seen as a bunch of young teenagers doing young teenager things inside grocery stores. While yeah, it's annoying as an adult to see kids acting this way, it wasn't the most insane or crazy thing ever, and they weren't outright trying to break things or make a mess at the end of the day. At worst, they were just a nuisance you ignore whenever going around the store buying the stuff you need for home. Of course, this would change as just a few months later on September 1st, 2017, Jack would upload a video where his friend would throw a plate over the aisle and break it alongside a few cups. While Jack wasn't the one who actually did it, what was noticeable is that for the first time he seemed a bit rattled by his friend doing this which in hindsight showed that even if he had this outgoing and confident personality, he was still generally the type of person to abide by rules and not break stuff on purpose or cause major issues or anything like that. That was the dumbest thing ever. That was the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Why did you do that? Dude, you can't do that. Dude, Guys, don't leave that? a dislike because that is not my. I did not do that. I just filmed that. I, I have no idea, to... bro. I have... no, I'm Why'd, Asian, you I Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Nonetheless, Jack would continue to mainly post Walmart prank and shenanigan related content seeing that this was his new bread and butter, that which isn't the most crazy and was mainly more the same. Him and his friends walking around a place messing around while trying not to get in trouble. It was your typical slew of clout chasing trendy content that was seen back in the day. But given he was so young and confident, his personality was appealing to the audience much better than most people because of that, making his job a lot easier in the process. He would even give his hand at the diss track trend that was going around during that time to very middling results to be completely honest about it. You know. 40 grand in a month, you wishing you can match, then I got the girls, the shoes and soon the rollers. Nonetheless, on January 1st, 2018, just a little over a year into his YouTube career, Jacka uploaded his 1 million subscriber video to the channel with him and his family all around to celebrate, showing just how popular this 14 year old was on the internet in such a short amount of time. Two more. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Wow, no. Yes! If it wasn't obvious by then, it was obvious by now. Jack was destined for YouTube success in one way or another. As very few people are able to get an internet career going to begin with, let alone a kid who wasn't even old enough to drive yet getting to a million subscribers so quickly. The sky was the limit for him. But soon after getting to this impressive achievement, he would find himself facing the first real controversy in his YouTube career. On March 7th, 2018, Jacko uploaded a video titled Trolling Ninja on Twitch, in which he would donate obscene amounts of money to the famous Fortnite streamer while he was streaming as it was a popular way to get views off his name back in the day. The video itself was innocent enough with Jack donating around $500 to the guy in his stream asking him to do stuff, but towards the end Ninja would notably get annoyed with this and end up blocking him from continuing to donate any further, with Jack saying that he never refunded the money back. It's so annoying, man. He's just sorry, he's donating a shitload of money. He's just he's asking me to like react and call me his daddy and shit and for like a YouTube video. And now he's asking me to play. He's like, oh, here's another hundred. We better play. So I just blocked his email and now I'm refunding him because he's annoying. Cool. He blocked my email so I can't donate to him anymore. His loss, bro. I just gave him like 600 bucks. This is good. This is good for the video. I actually love my money back. Guys, let's see if he actually refunds my money. Now that was a pretty big thing to pin on the man because Ninja was at his peak during this time of his career. And when a YouTube star like Jack Doherty was implying he was a liar and a scammer, that made him look pretty bad in the eyes of many. A couple weeks later, Jack uploaded his video exposing Ninja on March 30th, in which he starts to say that Ninja is money hungry yet for some reason wasn't liking how he was donating a bunch of money in the stream, before going on to leak DMs between the two of them showing Ninja threatening to take his video down he made about him alongside saying that he refunded the money back. Jack would reply back saying that he's just 14 years old and that Mr. Beast did something similar but he's cool with it, in which Ninja doubles down on his mission to take down his video and gives him 8 hours before he does so himself. 
Jack would say he doesn't want to take it down because he'll lose money and views if he does. In which Ninja tries to say that he was being contradictory as Jack explains further that if he takes the video down that's less money and viewers in the process. Nonetheless, Ninja will continue to push Jack into deleting the video and Jack wasn't having any of that. And he would again state that he refunded the money and that the video is fake because of that, telling him to stop using his name for clout. Jack would then show Ninja he did refund him but only 300 bucks instead of the total amount he sent him, with their conversation ending off with Jack saying he'll donate as Ninja tells him he doesn't need the money and to take the video down before blocking him soon after. This entire beef was pretty simple and rather boring when it came down to it, as while Ninja was indeed being prissy about Jack making a video about him, he had no legal right to take the video down as it was fair use, and it seemed he was more upset about the fact that Jack initially lied to his audience that he never refunded him. While Jack did fess up that he got 300 bucks back whilst not admitting he initially lied to his audience about not getting any money back, it's worth pointing out that he spent at least 360 real dollars as he showed so in his last video he made about the guy. So he was indeed out of at least $60 as far as people could tell. Nobody really looked good as Ninja just came off as annoying and Jack showed that he was willing to stretch the truth, mislead, and even lie to his audience in order to paint himself in a sympathetic light. No thanks to trying to use his age as a shield when discussing this stuff with Ninja in DMs. Nothing exactly interesting will happen for the next year and a half on Jack's channel, as he would continue to make the typical clickbaity mainstream content of random challenges in trampoline parks and other places, of course continuing to mess around in Walmarts much to the employees' annoyance. This content would obviously get him millions and millions of views in the process as that's how that side of the internet works like, and he would continue to grow and grow and make a lot of money in the process. Nothing was stopping this kid as he continued to get richer and richer with every upload, and around this time, he would start a new type of content revolving around the ever-popular internet caring craze that became very popular a couple years back. On July 29th, 2020, Jacka uploaded his first video in the Karen series. That which isn't really of any significance and mainly just a random woman in the neighborhood he was visiting getting mad at him and his friend for snooping around an abandoned house. This was interesting to watch as he was now a 16, going to be 17 year old bigger and stronger teenager, and when combining that with someone who has a high self-confidence and inflated ego thanks to his massive YouTube success, this would catch the attention of more and more people as time progressed. His Karen series would continue on into his own neighborhood, as there are a multitude of videos Jack uploaded having to do with this beef with his own neighbor, all stemming from when he and his friends were riding dirt bikes and jumping off hills near their house. Before. All right. My husband has seen you before. Is he the one that called the cops me? You guys live right there? Jack's beef with this woman in particular would continue on for the next few months, as he would find himself getting into arguments with her after instigating stuff between them by driving past her house constantly, for example. Even Ding Dong ditching her place a couple times as well. This will lead to them arguing on the front porch of his place, showing just how much he didn't care that he was harassing her for the past couple months as she says she plans on suing him and his family. You're driving around your f***ing dirt bike around my house. Technically. You're harassing me, you're ding dong ditching my house. Are you kidding me? Technically, but- Technically, what? yes. Technically, yes. But on the bright side, if I never answered the door, you would have walked away and it would technically be you ding dong and then ditch. The fourth time you've been to my house, I've been to your house too. You and your family and you're still uh -huh. harassing me. I'm gonna get a restraining order against you. Go ahead, I should get one too because you keep coming to my house also. You should get now in the past, she had already argued with his parents before about him riding dirt bikes and such around her place. But this time he was taking it a step further by blatantly harassing her for content. And so with this beef escalating more and more with every passing week, a certain bald figure would catch interest in this ongoing war and get Jack to come his way and try to figure out what exactly is going on between them. On December 17th that year, Jack would upload a video announcing he was going to be on Dr. Phil, a show most famous for the man in question talking to a multitude of people who have issues that he and his team think can bring in the most views to the show. They became aware of his Karen beef and hit up his manager inviting him on, and of course they took it because that's fantastic publicity and attention towards the Jack Doherty brand. The video in question mainly just shows him hanging around waiting for the interview, and ends off with him behind the scenes as they prepare for the inevitable. It's too much, right? Exactly. There's two sides to every story, and I think you guys are kind of focusing just on her side, but... Have you ever apologized to Rachel? I'll, I'm 100% willing to apologize to her right now. Rachel, I am sorry for, uh... The episode would go live the next day on the 18th, in which Jack and the woman get on a call together that doesn't lead to anything fixing between them two, and even Jack's own brother Michael coming on and saying how he's been taking things too far after he took his luxury car and almost wrecked it for content. I thought he was gonna crash or something, and also I, I think he was just trying. If I crash a car, I'd buy a new one. Let's be real. No worries. I'm yeah, talking I'm to you, I'm talking to your brother, and you're Facts. interrupting. You're right. Nothing would come of this, and nothing interesting would really happen from this point onwards. Jack wouldn't show any remorse for harassing the woman and would continue to milk the topic on easy views for his channel as much as he could. A couple days later, however, he would end up apologizing to her, 
getting her a gift basket and squashing things once and for all. Though notably, in the video and even description, he states he didn't feel the need to do this and only did so because Dr. Phil advised him to. Still putting the blame on her for what's been going on between the two of them. But I'm doing this to make Dr. Phil happy, not because uh, I really want to apologize to her. You know, I really don't. I don't really care because I think we're both in the wrong. But I'm going to be the big man, you know, apologize to her anyways, even though I don't. I don't know if I mean it that much, guys. I'm not a bad care whatever, but like, she was the one who started this whole thing, bro. Like, I may have taken it too far, but literally the only thing I did was, was record her and maybe instigate a little bit. But she was the main character in this whole thing. Like, she was the one playing the parts and doing all the stuff, you know. Like, not me. I wasn't a bad kid or anything like that. Maybe For the next couple years after this, nothing exactly interesting would really happen with Jack. He will continue to make the typical clickbaity content he's been producing his entire career, though his views started to fall off a bit as people grew tired of the same old antics he's been up to. He also kept moving from house to house for whatever reason as time progressed, making clickbait titles implying he was moving into some of them when he was actually just checking it out with the realtor, mainly just enjoying life as a rich young adult now that he moved out of his family's place to continue producing content. It seemed that Jack was starting to get a bit desperate to keep his money flow going, however, as he would start to sell courses on how people can make money the way he does, even starting up not one but two OnlyFans accounts now that he was of legal age to get any people willing to buy that kind of content from the man. It's not exactly a shocking revelation to anyone who knows about the guy, but Jack has hardwired his brain to be content and money first 24 hours 7 days a week. He loves the attention from his content because it gets him a lot of money, and for a good 7 year run he never really needed to shift his content because he was successful in what he was currently doing. Even in this new era where he was starting to fall off a bit, he would immediately take advantage of being a legal adult by doing the OnlyFans. Not only that, but also becoming the manager of a select number of girls who had accounts on the site, getting a cut of their profit in exchange for whatever they agreed upon behind the scenes. Now those courses Jack was selling on how to make content like his own is on the site 8 Figure Influence, and everybody knows the course selling stuff is just another way people online like to try and siphon as much money as they can from their followers. Almost every single one of them includes either bogus and or basic info that does anything except make someone's career take off most of the time, with the buyer generally losing money while the seller gets richer off them. I'm going to tell you guys how much money I make because now I have over 11 million subscribers on YouTube and 10 million followers on TikTok. And subscribers on the... Uh, yeah, so a lot of things are different now. Including my friends, because they keep asking me for money. So I had to figure out a way to teach my friends how to make as much money as me. So I spent the last couple months creating a course that shows you how I was able to make over $10 million at just 19 years old. And for a limited time, it's only $97 at 8figureinfluence.com. And for less than one of these, I can show you how I was able to get all of these. He would even start to hang around more interesting personalities like the Island Boys, for example as they were well-known names in the internet that he could leech clout and money off of if he just dealt with their antics. Alongside all we just talked about, Jack would see his next big venture in the money-making business online after a new streaming website called Kick would come about, in which he started to heavily livestream as much as he could in order to get as many viewers and attention towards his brand as possible. This was new for the guy as he had only ever made edited content before, and so while most people knew he was abrasive and argumentative on his channel in recent years, it was easier for him and his team to cut out anything that would make him look worse and paint his overall persona as just a confident young man. However, now that he was streaming on kick, his true personality was on blast 24-7 for the world to see when the cameras are rolling, and it would come to no one's surprise that his edited content was just a small taste of what he was really like behind the scenes. This new venture into live streaming kicked off without a hitch, as Jack would show off his true personality to the world by pressing random strangers only to hide behind a security team whenever someone pressed him back. There was another instance of him acting a fool at a mall one day, in which the security guard would tell him that he isn't allowed to film on mall property, only for Jack's own security guard to start pressing the guy after Jack was being rude and shoving the mic in his face. Just telling you, you're not allowed to do this on mall property. Oh. But I think the guys that aren't allowed to do it on mall property are over there. No, no, no. I'm talking to you. Oh. I'll talk to them. Put your stuff up. Okay. All right. We'll go. We'll leave. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. All right. We'll put it down. We'll put it. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll take a picture. Hey, the guys. Yeah. I tried to talk to them. Thank you. No problem. Look, sir. The kids love me. Let me be, yeah, please. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. Okay, yeah. I'm going to ask you one more time. I'm going to ask you one more time. I said we were leaving. Okay, I'm going to follow you out. We're leaving, bro. Like, relax. We're going to talk. Get that shit out of my face. Or, Put it out of my face. Or what? Okay. Well, that. So give it back. Watch out. 
You're gonna take this stuff. I didn't touch him. No, yes, you did. I didn't touch him. We're doing the same job. You don't touch him. I took the mic because he put it in my face. Jack likes to press people only when he knows his security can save him. And even at that, people have managed to get through them on more than one occasion, such as this random dude when he was acting up at a pier one day. We got out of there, motherfuckers. Let's go. Watch the language. There's kids around here. I didn't say any curse words. What'd I say? Just watch your language. What'd I say? You got a stupid shirt on over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure your kids don't? can't read, though. What are you though. talking about? Your kids can't read, can they? <laughs> I'm sure your kids me. watch. Uh, you, get away from you me. You started talking to me, buddy. Get away from uh, me. Uh, 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 you get away from me. Watch your kids. Go wa walk away. Yo, yo, what? Say you, man. Hey, 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 he would even take it to Twitter and try to say that the other guy was pressing him when he was the issue the entire time, again showing how he can't take accountability and responsibility for his actions and always tries to put the blame on other people, something that's extremely similar all the way back to the Karen fiasco from over three years ago now. This isn't the only time his security was caught lacking or not paying any attention, as there are multiple clips out there of Jack getting his shit rocked by people like FouseyTube and Izzy Prime for talking trash and not being able to back none of it up. Hey, I think this guy's f***ing beta. God damn it. <laughs> Beta said, hey. Yo, you're a bitch. You're a little bitch. Bro, you're a bitch. He didn't even have his kick money yet. Yo, you're f***ing. I'm Beta. I'm asking 33 years old. I'm Beta. Hey, yo, get me some water bottles, John. Give me some water. You're lucky yo. I made friends with your security. Hey, now, we can't. Hey, now we can't box. There's a whole... Right after Prime smacked him, the police would show up as it got swatted prior, in which he starts acting tough again, knowing that he got people on his side to protect him. Hey, oh, no, don't smack that bitch. Yeah, get do it again, bitch. Do it again. Come on. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Let's go. You act hard. You act hard when no one. Even when he decided to not press charges and sign a police form saying so, he still somehow manages to make himself look like a punk when speaking with the cop about it, clearly unaware or uncaring that the way he carries himself makes him out looking like a fool. I'm sorry, playing games with you. Look at me. Yeah. I'm not playing games with you. You said he slapped you. You're not going to prosecute, right? I'm going to give you a document. You sign it. We get out of here. Okay, we're not gonna come back here with the noise. I don't want any okay, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. We're not gonna come back out here for this, okay? You understand? Let me get the document, you sign it, we get out of here. All right. I'm of course being flipped into the bad guy, but fuck. Jack always likes to bring up how other people are older than him so he could deflect the situation off himself. But none of that works no more because he's not a kid anymore. He's an adult who should be able to back his stuff up without security trying to bail him out every time. He only acts tough when his security is around, otherwise he'll let himself get manhandled and punked by people because he knows he'll get his ass beat otherwise. He ripped my sign down, guys, look. Ah! 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 Okay, I'm leaving your room. I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Uh, house is gay. My house is gay. house is gay. I slapped the dog shit out of you. I slapped the dog shit out of you. Your house is gay. Uh, Men touch each other in here. You're gay. You're While it's entertaining to see someone as egotistical and unlikable as himself getting pressed like that, it's not surprising that he's uploading all this on his own YouTube channel to get as many views and money as possible. He is so desperate for any money and clout that he'll belittle and embarrass himself so long as it gets him closer to his end goal, even if it makes him out to be a complete and utter fool in the process. Jack even ran into issues with the Island Boys one night when one of them tried to fight him as he kept backing down, in which they would end up outside somehow and one of them got a good shot on him through his own security. He would then blame it on the other people for not protecting him despite this being his beef and not theirs, also calling his security bad for not protecting him as well. Told you guys he won't, he won't fight me fair and all you guys try to say all this you guys are like none of you guys listen to what i had to say he someone came up to me he was like he's gonna sneak you and all you guys were saying all this bullshit, like he's not Yo, gonna do it look, we're gonna try to sneak flew. Did, 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 he flew uh, l security he l security he flew so and hit you you guys let me get it twice right y'all are uh let me get you some of my l security 
This constant cycle of abuse he finds himself in is almost impressive, yet he's always part of the problem each and every time even when he doesn't start it because he lets his ego and lust for money and content fuel this pattern more and more. There's some other smaller situations that went down too, like Jack finding himself getting called up by YouTuber Danny Aarons to a boxing match, in which they had a small pissy match between each other on Twitter that didn't lead to anything other than insults and Jack saying his facial hair looks like pubes. He would end up getting banned on kick for two days after girls kept flashing his camera sometime in early January 2024, and right after he got unbanned he would get served a speeding ticket and start to mock the officer in his expected arrogant and rude personality. Too fast. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. Maybe get the driving. I'll stop. I'll never do it again. <laughs> Even recently, on March 26 this year, he would end up getting banned from Disneyland and Universal Studios for whatever reason there was. So who knows what went down there? Most of this stuff we've talked about, Jack here, shows that he will do whatever it takes in order to get money and attention his way. And even when he's not explicitly doing so, his egotistical and arrogant personality makes him out to be a very unlikable figure. It's very easy to hate this guy because he doesn't care so long as he's getting money his way. And that lust for money goes far more than just clickbaity content and making himself out to be a fool online. Remember how I mentioned earlier that he runs a couple girls only fans pages? Well, Jack has been implicitly promoting them online in sneaky and sly ways, such as not mentioning their jobs by name but rather only implication instead. Yo, what do you guys do for a living to afford all these cars? I'm a boxer. Oh, what? What? You can like kiss guys. You guys no. do this to me on camera every time. Like, you guys don't do anything better than me. You guys literally all sell your picks online. All right, McKinley, however many only subscribers you have, that's your budget. I'll buy whatever you want. Oh my gosh, bet. Do you even know how many I have? How many do you have? 200K. 200,000? Yeah, it's like my budget, right? Bro. Right, so how'd you get a 14 million snap score? I have an OSOI Snapchat, a lot of guys. It makes sense. Remember, these girls that are employed by him and his team sell themselves online, and him sneakily promoting this by not outright saying their occupation but implication shows he's not a dumb guy and knows what he's doing. Some may even argue that he's promoting this adult content to a child audience, and given that his content generally since the very beginning has always had this kid audience attached to it, even if at the end of the day it's impossible to get accurate numbers it just comes off so sleazy and weird. This is pretty interesting to see because it shows that Jack is willing to step into controversial territory and engage in practices that can negatively affect his career beyond having a bad reputation, but actual legal issues. In fact, it comes to no one's surprise that Jack has faced issues relating to that nature, because if there's one thing this dude is good at, that's getting himself in trouble and doing whatever he can to make as much money as possible. While they start off tame enough, some of the stuff going on in his life adds a lot of darker lore to the man, with some people wondering if he's beyond just a random rich kid doing whatever it takes for easy internet money. On January 10th, 2024, YouTuber Mimulus would post on Twitter that his video was falsely copyright claimed by Superbam Inc., a content identification company best known for this practice with their clients, a company that even I ran into issues back when I made my FouseyTube documentary way back when. YouTuber I'm Alex would reply to his post showing that he was also falsely claimed on his own video talking about the dude as well, and YouTube themselves will end up catching wind of their complaints to say that they were passing the situation up the ladder so they can figure out what's going on here. Now my issue with Superban was eventually rectified and my copyright claim was dropped as things went back to normal for me, so it comes to no one's surprise that Mimulus will get his issue settled within 24 hours. He also notably says that apparently these companies don't go through with these kind of claims unless the creator themselves tells them to. Now I'm not too sure about that myself given I'm not too familiar with these kinds of issues, but it does make me wonder if this is actually the case as my Fuzzy video took around 2-3 to three weeks before it got cleared whereas his only took 24 hours. Also, I'm Alex never followed up with the post stating if his issue was settled or not, but I'm willing to assume so if Mimulus was able to get his stuff fixed rather quickly. While this is just a small example of Jack seemingly trying to take money away from some of his detractors, the next is an actual legal issue that could very well cause a lot more issues than he initially realized. On October 29th, 2023, Jack was at a Halloween party hosted by a handful of famous online influencers, in which he would go around with his cameraman not really doing much at all. That is, however, until he came across a girl who wasn't having a good night with their friend helping her and keeping her company, in which he would start to annoy and somewhat antagonize them because he's an asshole. Why are you live streaming this? You're an asshole. Go away. Am I? Yes, you're an asshole. You want water? How are you? Are you 19? Go away. I'm 20. You're not. Yeah, I'm giving her my water. Why are Mother you taking a video? Why is it? You're right. I'm always waiting for the video. I just want to look good now after that. No, I'm kidding. F you, fucking hell. First thing she said to me was, I'm 12, you're a f***ing whore. Hey, I don't give a f***. Oh, okay. It's just yeah. it's You guys cry. Go. Oh, no. Avert. No. Okay. No. Wait. Oh, oh, so oh, you hurt my feelings. It's just don't film somebody when she's drunk. That's I all. 
talk just because I don't want to okay. repeat that the next day and be like embarrassed. You know, like it's that's all. How many of y'all gonna say the same fucking thing, huh? No, I'm kidding. No, because you guys all want to pitch in because you're girls and you guys don't know what to do besides being drama. Have a good day. I, I get like the whole like uh, thing, but just like do, know. you know. They want to end up on a good note. Hey, have a good night. <laughs> get right. Attitude assholes. Later that night, he would call another influencer named Karina a whore, and he would eventually run into her alongside some friends of hers calling him out for being rude for no reason. Karina's a whore. I'm, I'm doubling down. F that bitch. I don't even bet, baby. I don't got your live stream. Pulled yeah, I'm up. sorry. You'll never know. I heard you called her a Damn. And that's that I was like, wait, we got a lot of I heard! That's what I heard! This confrontation would get his security guard to step in to de-escalate the situation, in which Jack starts to now act all tough like we've seen before, knowing someone will bail him out of a fight if things go south, even running into Karina herself and lying about calling her names on his stream earlier. Yo, what are you fighting? Us two versus you two. All right, go. I don't see Sam talking shit. It's just because I'm at a party and I don't want to talk to you, you say that I'm just an OnlyFans. That's not it was. That's yeah, literally that's what it was. Okay, wait, wait. I literally got sent a clip in the middle of a party. Oh, uh, really? I just like, just because I'm at a party. Clip. No, like, I'm at a party. I don't want to be on the street. Now, at this moment in time, the situation was already on the downhill by this point, as it was clear nobody was fighting nobody, and people were mainly just telling Jack to grow up and stop acting like a young idiot. That is, until a security guard decided to sucker punch one of the guys Jack was talking to earlier for seemingly no reason at all. Wait, chill, chill. No, no, no. Yo, just back up. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. I'm just saying, y'all say Yo, you just stop. Tell him to stop. Tell him to stop. Trust me. Tell him to stop. Oh, fuck. Oh, no, yo, stop. Stop. No, I'm with you. Are you Hey. Oh, my God. Holy f guys. Everyone follow me on kick. What the f just happened? As y'all can probably tell, it was pretty clear that the security guard was the one in the wrong here. As well, yeah, Jack was being his typical egotistical and antagonistic self. By the point before the punch was thrown, there was no sign of any real fight about to break out at all. It would turn out that his guard is named Justin Gosley and is a former professional boxer and current model for Nova Men. Also creating content on Instagram under the name Kane Kong, mainly posting himself lifting weights and model related stuff. It would also turn out that Justin here has had the same exact situation happen before way back in September 2019 when he was running security for Rapper the Baby. He started to get swarmed by fans after a show, in which he would pick out one of them and knock him out cold with the punch, someone who just happened to be a woman which didn't make him look any better. A couple months later on February 21st, 2024, the man in question now named as Chase Gardella was sent into a lawsuit against Jack and Justin for assault, battery, negligence, and emotional distress. The TMZ article going over everything would even show off the injuries Chase sustained after Justin punched him, and his lawyer would comment stating that the behavior Jack and his cronies get themselves into needs to end, with most people assuming the results of this suit will give him a real wake-up call in his life. The lawsuit is available to keep up with online, and while most of the initial filing is information we know about already, it shows how Justin has also been arrested for assault and battery in Florida in the past alongside the baby incident. Also adding how Jack paid Chase $5,000 to try and rectify the situation alongside him talking about it on stream afterwards. On March 18th, 2024, Jack would officially get served the papers at the Jack Doherty LLC located in Jacksonville, Florida, making it official that the case was still moving forward. Alongside this personal in-person service of the papers at the LLC, he would also get mail proof of this as well to the current house he's living at located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with copies of the mailing question being attached to a court document on March 19th. That which shows he got it a couple weeks ago on March 5th, mailing it back to the law firm representing Chase as requested. The hearing is scheduled for June 20th, 2024, and for what I've seen, it doesn't seem any more major updates to the case will be added as we wait and see what happens with Jack and Chase. Honestly, it's not looking too good because it's very obvious Jack was the initial instigator going up to people and harassing them for content. And even if he wasn't the one who attacked anybody, the security guard he hired to protect him ended up being just as much of an instigator if not more than him as he himself was the one who punched Chase. I don't see this being dragged out for too long in court, and if Jack is smart he'll just take the L, pay the money and move on from this because the evidence is majorly stacked against him and Justin. All of this is an extremely bad look on the man, and this is the first time he's faced any legal repercussions due to his actions, so one can only wonder if he'll learn his lesson from this after all these years, or if he will get right back to it and continue to go down this path he's made for himself. While the court stuff is ongoing and we won't get any official answers to what's going on there anytime soon, there's still one other situation that's been brewing behind the scenes that has a lot more darker implications about the man. Now we've already seen how Jack likes to sneakily promote his girls OnlyFans account to his audience on YouTube, 
with one girl in particular named Natalie Reynolds being one of them. Snap is at Nat Reynolds 69. Well, on December 21st, 2023, Nat would come out and allege that Jack paid off someone at Instagram to ban her account off the site after something went down between them, before going on to say that he grooms minors to do OnlyFans. She would follow this up stating that the girl in question was 17 years old and Jack waited until she was 18 to get her drunk and have her sign a contract on a yacht party. Now those are some very disturbing allegations to make about the man, and Jack himself would respond quickly basically saying the accusation is dumb and she's clout chasing for money and calling her names, not really addressing anything she's saying but just blowing it off with insults instead. A video clip would come out of someone actually calling him out about his weird behavior on stream from a presumed few weeks or months ago alongside a new tweet by Nat, saying he preys on those close to turning 18 because they're fresh and older men like that, also saying he gets 100% of their revenue and pays his OnlyFan girls a flat salary of 3000 a month. But he obviously doesn't claim that it was together. Let's just say around November. Her told me everything that you were fing hanging out with her. I have fing pictures and videos of you show guys fing cuddling. I bet you all show up. And then she would tell me that you would Uber her home when I was about to come over. Wow. Oh, shit. I didn't even. And I don't... then when I met her on fing like, oh, New Year's Eve, you told her to tell me that she met you that day. You guys knew each other since fing. Now this story would initially die off pretty quickly after Nat posted it, not because of a lack of interest however, but because the very next day she would get chased by helicopter and police and arrested for pulling off the free candy in a van prank, where she would lure children with candy under the guise of it being a social experiment for easy views and attention online. Most people write off her claims about Jack as her trying to get that easy attention, and I can't blame anyone for thinking that because she set herself up for her word to mean nothing within 24 hours. So people move on after seeing yet another online influencer trying to chase that clout wave for easy money and attention. Now I said this story initially died off, because it was brought back to life just a few months later as on February 3rd, 2024, YouTuber The Asher Show would be investigating this situation himself and DM Nat for info. He would get nothing back from her, but she would instead give him off to someone named Matthew Gonzalez, an ex-employee of Jack who states he was the mastermind behind reviving his career online. Asher would get him in an interview and they would talk about how he was the one who was coming up with the new video ideas for Jack and it all started when he paid him 100k up front to help revive his career. Saying how he hated making those OnlyFans promo vids and even told Jack about it. He paid me $100,000 up front with no contract to uh, kind of leave Jesser and then go and basically revive his career and that's exactly what I did. Um, right, I okay. honestly like really hated all this stuff. I always told Jack that I hated this stuff. Matt would go on to say that Jack and D took 100% of their revenue and gave them salaries before eventually caving in and giving them a small percentage after they started to complain about how he's ripping them off. Of course, he takes 100% he gives him salary. Wow. Finally giving up some percentage, you know, after like the girls complaining after so much and, and whatnot, but it really is sad. Like, like what these girls like, you know, how they allow it. And he used me, just how he's gonna use her. <coughs> Matt would go on to say he avoids taxes with the money from the girls by making bank accounts using their names and information. But most importantly, starts to talk about the grooming claims, saying that he goes after the youngest ones to lure them in when they finally hit legal age. They obviously go for like the youngest ones. Crazy one that they have, Claire. She was 17 and like uh, we met her at Sway. Not even just Claire. He obviously just goes for the young girls. And Claire actually signed when she was drunk on a boat. And she's not allowed to drink, but. She signed to, yeah. hit to him when she was drunk on a boat. He waits to get these drunk and make them sign their life away. Like Now this is also very serious stuff to say about Jack. And you would think it would have blown up the very day the video dropped. Yet this would fall mostly under the radar as Asher's video wouldn't be reposted or even talked about in wider internet circles as far as I could tell. Even so, it's possible this hit the likes of that side of the internet at one point, as kickstreamer Nam would say the same stuff we've been seeing on March 13th, 2024. Only this time saying that he signs in when they're underage the night before they turn 18. You get 17 year old girls the night before their birthday, you, got, you buy a $10,000 yacht every time. You get them drunk and they sign a contract 50% of their life every single time. While this is coming from Neon of all people, the dude best known for being every kick streamer's punching bag and for faking his death back when he made NBA 2K videos, the story would be reignited because of his massive popularity on the site. Jack would eventually respond to these claims about him on March 17th, 2024, in which he says that the rumors of him signing underage or freshly 18 girls is false saying that he's younger than every girl he signed except one and that she signed four months after she turned 18. I'm younger than basically every girl I have signed except for like one. And that girl signed four months after her 18th birthday. So I have proof to back everything up if I need to, but it's just so dumb that people really 
like believe that type of shit and they want to believe it because they hate me and they just can't accept the fact that I'm doing well in life. He would say it's dumb that people believe these claims about him and that apparently Neon apologized him behind the scenes for what he said a few days ago before anything's off shortly after. I know Neon even said some shit about it on stream saying that I do that. It's because he sees it on the internet and then wants to believe it. Not that he even believes it. He texted me apologizing because he knows I don't do that shit. One thing that caught my eye was the age stuff. As Jack is currently 20 years old, making him below drinking age. And he mentions how one of the girls is younger than him. While he says she was four months into being 18 when she signed a contract with him, he notably doesn't mention if he ever gave her alcohol or not, as that was another thing being said about him. Perhaps I'm looking into that part a little too deep, but it's worth pointing this out for any future happenings that may come along from all this. As we've seen today, Jack Doherty is one of the more insufferable people we've discussed on the channel so far. While we saw how at the beginning of his career he just made whatever would get him views, as time went on he would step things up a notch further and further in order to get as many views and money as possible. This seemed at first to culminate in harassing his neighbor to the point of going on Dr. Phil, only for that to end up turning into what he is today on Kick. Not only showing the lengths he was willing to go in order to get those views and money, but also showing this negative habit of blaming those around him or deflecting his own actions for causing issues in the first place. Matthew Gonzalez claimed to be the guy who was able to revive Jack's career online, and while he never explicitly states if he was the one who came up with the idea for signing girls to OnlyFans contracts and making those sneaky YouTube shorts promoting them, he did say he didn't like producing any of that at all. The OnlyFans stuff is again a very interesting thing about Jack to me, because it again reinforces how far he's willing to go in order to make a quick buck. While there's zero evidence and only hearsay from two former people who've worked with the guy that he takes all their money and now only gives them a small percentage, given how money hungry the dude is in general, it doesn't sound like an unbelievable thing at all, and I would not be surprised not one bit if hard evidence came out about those claims one day. As far as the claims of Jack grooming underage girls and signing them to contracts once they turn 18, that's a very serious allegation to make, and unless I see evidence of the yacht parties or the contracts or something, I'm not going to believe and spread something around like that. As much as I find the dude insufferable and annoying, I don't like to put serious things like that on somebody as that's some life ruination stuff right there. I'll be waiting if more stuff drops about these claims, so until then it's something we just gotta keep an eye out for. While Jack is such an interesting individual with many things going on, the most interesting one to me is how far he's willing to take stuff so long as it gets him views and money. We've discussed it a little already, but the thing that really sticks out to me is how he's now willing to let himself get manhandled and embarrassed on stream for content, and he cares so little that he even re-uploads all that to his YouTube channel. I very rarely look into this side of the internet, but I've never seen such a cast of characters where their only purpose is to just talk trash and fight each other over the most middle school tier drama. Everybody is clout hungry and will say and do whatever it takes to get the attention to themselves, even if it means making themselves look to be a complete fool in front of millions of people online. It's so sad but I can't feel sorry because these people chose this life for themselves, and sooner or later things are only going to get worse as each of them try to one up each other. While researching Jack, I found this one video uploaded back in February this year on his second YouTube channel Jack Alive, a video that for 8 minutes he just rambles about wanting to be a better person in the future. While I like to normally take things apart so you can understand easier, listening to him speak raw about it is so much more interesting, just take a listen for yourselves. Like I've, I'm 20 years old, but I've been evicted from three $10 million mansions and gotten sued by each one of my landlords. Like, I, I'm sorry, I'm, obviously it took me three times to learn my lesson, but it's just like, like right now it's 6.30 in the morning and I'm still live streaming. Like what the f wrong with me? The sun's coming up. Who the f does that? Someone put me to f sleep. Why, the, why isn't this melatonin not working? What the? Like, God damn it, I'm gonna f sue the medical pharmacy. Where's Johnson & Johnson at, God damn it? Give me some Zags. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Help me. It's like risk to award. Oh yeah, get sued for 50K, but make 500K worth of, co worth of content, a million dollars worth of content, whatever it is. It's just like, all right, yeah, there's like, it's a business expense at the end of the day. So it's like, there's certain calculated decisions I have to make where it's like going through a lawsuit, blah, blah, but it's like, not all the time it goes there. You just settle, give them money, everyone's happy, it's cool, whatever. The rest of the video is mainly just more rambling about how he believes he's a good person, but that part where he treats his actions as a cost analysis is interesting to me. Because even when he's clearly not in the right headspace, as you can see by the rambling nature and his body movements and such, he thinks of his actions in terms of how much money he'll make versus what he'll lose. The upcoming court case is a great example of this. Jack probably made a bucket load of money off the stream and reposts all over the internet, and I'm willing to bet in terms of the monetary loss he'll take versus the amount he made during the controversy, he'll probably come out with a net positive. It shows that Jack is willing to do damaging things so long as the amount paid doesn't lead to a net loss in money, and further shows how he only thinks in money and not whether what he does makes him look good or not. 
Well, I don't believe him saying how he's a good person and how he wants to post better content and be less controversial as it would directly affect his bottom line. Maybe, just maybe he'll get some sense knocked into him now that he has a court case coming up as this is the first time he's ever been sued. That's just me being optimistic, however, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens when all that goes down. There was even a recent situation where Jack was pressed in person by yet another dude he talked shit about online, with him constantly finding himself in these situations despite knowing it's stupid because he's that desperate for clout and attention. Later on that very stream, someone would go on to straight up dox another person's phone number to his cameraman as well. Though to be fair, it's his cameraman's fault for being a dumbass and showing it all up on stream like that to begin with. Stupid stuff like this is starting to become more common, and I wouldn't be surprised if this gets worse given how things have gone so far. With that being said, Jack's story clearly isn't over yet as y'all can probably tell, as this recent kick streamy stuff he's gotten himself into has been the first time where his antics were seen in majority of mainstream internet outlets, so only time will tell if things get worse for the man, or if he'll learn to simmer it down a bit for his audience. This side of the streaming world of the internet is a clout hungry jungle of people all wanting to leech off each other for content, and Jack surrounds himself with this because it's been a monetary positive on his career so far. Perhaps he'll get the sense knocked into him with this upcoming court case, or perhaps he'll get right back to it like nothing ever happened, no one knows for certain. But until then, all we can do is wait and see what the future holds for the guy and if he'll ever get his act together, or if he'll continue to go down this path of toxicity until something dire happens and puts his career in some serious jeopardy.